they have to run the ball to win tonight. But you have to take what the defense has given you, and this defense had been trapped in earlier games, particularly the tackles that are running right up the middle. Rogowski off the left side, looking for six, and he has a touchdown. Oh, this guy runs like a truck. The sophomore from Jackson, New Jersey, who's improved his speed, used to be close to five, but he's down to four, seven. Knocks guys over, and he scores a big six right there for Hofstra. And there's Hofstra moving down the field. They started, they were 70 yards away from getting a the touchdown. They move it down. They take up all 70 yards, Barry, on the ground. Unbelievable drive. All 70 yards, Marty, on the ground. They're going to remember that drive. That's going to be in the highlight film. Olszanski's kick is true. And Hofstra has regained a two-touchdown lead with two and a half minutes to go as Olszanski is perfect on the night, three for three. So the Flying Dutchman now with 21 points. They average 39 on the year. Watch the Higoski run here. This is basically the same play that they ran earlier with Mark Cox. Higoski takes the ball. It's a trap play. But look at the second effort. He gets hit by two people. The last guy comes in, but it's too late. He's already in the end zone. Higoski rushing for his second touchdown. He had come into the ball game rushing for an average of almost six yards a carry. And Mark Cox almost eight yards a carry. Now, Cox has improved that dramatically tonight. Five carries, 96 yards. Similar to that Bucknell game when he had a great game. Had that 80-yard run and uh, rushed for over 100 yards on very few carries. Well, we've talked to quite a few coaches in the league, and they said, if this wasn't a run and shoot, Mark Cox would be an All-American. Right now, they're not utilizing him, and he's not getting the recognition he deserves. Joe Gardy feels a little bit better about things right now as his team has up the lead to 21 to 7. Walter Oshansky getting ready to kick off from the 35. Back deep are exciting Alan Bell and Matt Pellowitz. Bell had a lot of return yardage last year against Hofstra. Over 114 yards in return. They kick it to Bell. It's a good kick for Oshansky, and he takes it at the goal line. Bell. Trying to get outside, gang tackled before he could get to the 20. Nice coverage again by Hofstra on the far side. Joe Gardy likes it. That'll be first and 10 for Mr. Scott. Agofsky's nine-yard run, capping that sixth play. 71-yard drive all on the ground to make it 21-7. to seven. So... Let's see what Mr. Scott and company can come up with here. Richie Lowe comes to the line of scrimmage. Work out of the shotgun. Scott stepping up in trouble. Go down. And he's taken down by Ayula Akadui, and he likes it. Akadui, the junior from Staten Island. Is that a Nigerian dance step? That's his third sack of the year for Ayula. Quick, has good feet, and that's the first Hofstra sack they came into this ball game with a total of 18 sacks, Marty. But most of those sacks, Barry, were coming from the linebackers. They were blitzing the outside linebackers, Billy Deacons and Jeff Brown. They were number one, number two in sacks. You cannot win consistently unless you get your defensive line getting them up there one and two in the sack. Well, if you think the baseball season ends after the World Series, folks, you haven't heard about baseball's greatest games. From Carlton Fisk's dramatic World Series home run in 75 to the Mets' miracle comeback in 86. It's baseball's greatest games, premiering Tuesday, October 28th, exclusively on Sports Channel. How about those Atlanta Braves and L.A. Dodgers winding things up with pretty exciting finish here, Marty? Well, being a man from down south, I've got to be pulling for the Braves. You know, anybody that can turn an organization around like they did, going from last place to being a contender this year, you know how hard they work, and then you say, hey, come on, guys, you got three games left. Left. Let's win them all. America's team, Mr. Ted Turner. Right now, Cliff Scott facing a second and 15 with 2.02 to go. Back at the goal line. Has time. And throws complete to Knapp. He's trying to pull away from Boyd. Javinsky trying to close him. And Boyd finally wraps him up at the 29-yard line as the Hofstra defense gives up another big play. This time, a 52-yarder as they might have got caught napping there. And 
Boyd may just have another piece of toast in his locker after that one. That was a big play, but it all starts. Scott goes back, he's playing with confidence. He didn't panic. The receiver wasn't open. He's waiting for Nat to make his break, and there it was. And they pick up positive yards. They're down in field position. Nat six catches for 111 yards. Scott with time again. Throwing it a complete. This is Chip Stone down inside the five at the three-yard line. Chip Stone, the sophomore from Biosville, New York, with his second catch of the year. And Barrett Boyd on the tackle. It's a goal-to-go -go situation with a minute 37 to go. Remember, they used two timeouts early, Marty, in the first quarter. So they're in trouble here as far as uh, time management is concerned. They have plenty of time. They're inside the five-yard line. they got a minute and 30 seconds. What Scott's doing is he's dropping back, and then he's been up in there his pocket. He's got an excellent job by his offensive linemen. They're rolling the pass rush outside him, and all he has to do is step up and deliver. Now they have exercised another timeout. This will be the last timeout as the freshman quarterback wants to go to the sideline, make sure of the play selection. He's 10 for 19 for 198 yards. And we talked to Gardy. He told us about the vulnerability of our pass defense. That's our weakness. And he's been hit hard by this uh, good-looking quarterback. Well, it all starts up front. He's gone back, attempted 19 passes, and only been sacked one time. Here he is. He steps up into the pocket. Nap catches it. Boyd's behind him. Boyd's not going to catch him unless he has to make a cutback. There it is. He gets some extra help. Then they make the tackle. That big playway is a 57-yarder. Here it is again. As you say, Barry, he's back, and now he steps right up. He avoids the pass rush. Right there, just a second effort gets it inside the five. All right, remember, they have no timeouts remaining. We'll set the scene for you. It's first and goal from the four-yard line, a minute 23 to go. So they time, certainly, as Marty mentioned, to run the football and still get some plays off. They make substitutions right here as they come in with the tight end. Ray Burby, 85, and Tony Carroll, 82, have checked in. So you'd think it might be a running play here. A freshman quarterback from Buffalo from Grand Island. With first and goal from the four. Looking in the end zone, and it's going to be incomplete. Nap the intended receiver. There was a flag on the play. Eric Boyd defending in the corner of the end zone. And that's just a mental mistake by Ray Burby. He moved too fast. Motion number 85. Ray Burby. The good-looking tight end from Vestal, New York, a super blocker. Marty pointing out they have moved a little prematurely. But, you know, Barry, I think that this is going to work into the advantage of Buffalo. Legal motion on the offense. Repeat the down. First down. I think Scott's going to take advantage. Now he has more room to work with. He has a hard time throwing the ball from five to 15 yards in. Now he's got five extra yards. Ball back at the nine. Deacon takes him down at the 18-yard line. A nine-yard loss, and Billy Deacon comes up with a big sack, his sixth sack of the year. And yet another big play by Billy Deacon. And down on the field is the quarterback. He's hurt. Remember we mentioned a bad shoulder. They thought it had been separated earlier. And he is down right now. Well, here comes Billy Deacon. Scott goes back. He gives the play fake. Number 41 should pick up 41. He misses him. And there's Billy Deacon. Slams him down on that bad shoulder. Eric Polanski, the fullback, missed the block there. He's a tough cookie, Scott. And shaking up their backup quarterback, Tony Policare, is number 11. Six foot 190 pound junior, transfer from Austin Pay, did not play very well last week at only 57 yards passing against Westminster. And overall, Policare is 10 for 21 for only 87 yards, four interceptions, and he's been sacked four times. What a tough spot to come into for the ball game. You could be a hero or a bum right here. We'll find out if Mr. Policare is either. Second and goal from the 18. 54 seconds to go. Pollock area trouble sack once again. Billy Deacon with another sack. And they had Vince Gallion at the bottom of the pile. Number 54 also. And the one thing Billy, he's doing the same thing that he did when he rushed on the field goal. He's just using his feet, his quickness off the ball, 
to get around that corner, break the corner down, collapse. He collapsed it twice on the field goal. Now he's collapsing it right on top of the quarterback. Coming up at halftime, Carl Reuter with a special feature on Wayne Morris, the All-American candidate, wide receiver. Third and 23. Scott looking for Strowman. And he had it for the moment. A flag on the play. Salgado defending. And let's see. There's another flag back at the line of scrimmage in the backfield. Roughing the passer is the initial call by referee Nelson. There are two flags on the play. One in the defensive backfield, one in the offensive backfield. Could be pass interference, one of them. Both penalties against Hofstra. Roughing the passer and defensive pass interference. So they'll take, of course, the bigger walk off. 12 seconds remain in the half. And now, Barry, this is where the timeout hurts. Because now they have to make the decision whether they go for the end zone if the pass is broken up or is incomplete, then the clock stops. If they throw a short pass, they won't have time enough to get their field goal team in. Now they have to make a decision. Do we go for the end zone or do we kick it right now? Well, this is the most we've seen the Hofstra defense on the field in the three of the four games that we've been uh, televising. We'll see what the call is here. We have Ruffin the passer on the defense is declined. We got offensive pass, inter defensive pass interference on the defense will be automatic first down. So they get the automatic first down, so they buy another play, but it may be academic here, Marty, with only 12 seconds remaining. They may have time for only one play. Unless they throw a quick pass and it's incomplete. Would they risk it here or go for the pass in the end zone? I think they gotta, they've got to go for the end zone one time. If it's incompleted, the, the clock stops, you bring on your field goal team and get the three points. All right, Policare calling signals. Looking for six in the end zone to Knapp, and he could not hang on. Rusty Knapp diving for that ball. He's played a gutsy first half, and he says, oh, my, Marty, I wish I could have hung on. And that play took four seconds. Knapp should have had it. Could have been a touchdown. They're going to try it again. Here's Polly, Polly Clear. He goes back. He throws the ball. It's right in Knapp's hands. Right there, he's got to bring it home. Great pass. He had it on his hands. Let's see if they go to that same place. Second and eight. Knapp in single cover. He looks for Knapp. Can't find him. In trouble throws. It's going to be complete, but shy of the goal line with two seconds. Barrett Boyd ran him out, but Mike Barry with tremendous pressure. Number 77 on the quarterback forced him to unleash that ball a little bit early, shy of the end zone. But Polly Kier made an excellent decision. If you take the sack, you're out of the field goal range. Right now, they're going to try to get seven points on the board. Sam Sanders gone for seven with two seconds left. He knows three is make a difference, but now he may change his mind as Tommy McLaughlin has hustled onto the field. Now there's a little bit of issue, but McLaughlin is on the field right now. Now they're waving off that unit. <laughs> they're going for it. Two seconds remain. Flag on the play. Bell. First half over. Galleon. Ran him down along with Jeff Brown and Mike Barry. However, there is a flag. And if there's a defensive penalty, of course, the first half cannot end. But apparently it is against the offense as Hofstra heads off. Legal formation on the offense. It's declined. End of the period. A little bit of confusion on the part as referee Nelson emphatically tells us at the end of the period with the whistle. A little bit of confusion on that last play. They didn't know whether they were going to go for the field goal, not go for it, and they ended up uh, lining off a mistake. And Barry, that's a poor decision right there on Sanders. They marched the ball all the way downfield with zero time on the clock. Take the three points. You still have 30 minutes to play in the second half. You go in, your team has momentum. It's 21 to 10, and your team comes out, and they'll and they've been playing hard. You can't take a lint on a negative.